the resurrection of Jesus is the cornerstone of the Christian faith. It's the beginning and the end. This is the point that we put our confidence in. That on the third day, after he was killed on the cross, Jesus rose from the dead. And Paul explains this in great detail in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So if you turn there and look at verses 12 to 20, you'll see some of the consequences of the resurrection of Jesus into the life of the believer. He said, verse 12, If it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can you say that there is no resurrection from the dead? Remember, these were people just as us, just the same as us, and they found this a very strange and mysterious doctrine. And he said, if there is no resurrection from the dead, verse 13, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we're found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he didn't raise him, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead has not, are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. So the first great longing of, of humanity to be forgiven, to come into a cleanness inside, it doesn't work. You're still in your sins. It's, Paul's, it's as if he's saying you're still encased in this sort of marsh, this bog that you're stuck in of guilt and the burden of things going wrong and think mistakes that you've made and deliberate faults and the cruelties, the tiny little petty cruelties that you've been involved in against other people. You're still in it. He says, but Christ has been raised. And so Paul starts to give us the answer, his answer, to the longings in humanity. If Christ has been raised, then you are not in your sins. And secondly, you, you, your life is not futile. Your life is not insignificant. If Christ has been raised from the dead, then you may be raised from the dead too. So this is from verse 14. Instead of saying negatively that your faith is not in vain or fruitless, you can say positively that because of the resurrection of the, of the Lord Jesus, our faith is fruitful. Fruitful. Sprouting all over, man. Don't you ever long for that? You know, the, the life of fruitfulness is the opposite to a life of barrenness. When I look at um, the things that I've achieved in my life, I want to be fruitful. I want to make a difference. I want to have a consequence. I want there to be a legacy that comes out of my life. I hope you agree. <laughs> it seems pretty futile otherwise. That need... That need for fruitfulness has, has never changed in spite of our sin. And now that we're no longer in our sin because of the forgiveness of sins that's offered to us in the resurrection of Christ, that longing for fruitfulness is satisfied by the resurrection of Jesus. You are brought into a new sphere of operations. It's like you've moved out of black and white TV into glorious Technicolor. Everything has taken on a new shape. Do you remember that bit? Uh, I've seen it in the reruns of The Wizard of Oz, where Dorothy land, lands with her spiralling cabin, lands it in the land of Oz, squarely on the Wicked Witch, and she lands into, uh, in Munchkin Land, isn't it? Munchkin Land. And do you remember, as the um, camera pans out, she opens the door and she steps out of black and white into glorious Technicolor, entirely populated by dancing dwarves. Well, that's the picture. That's the picture of stepping out of a place of insignificance, of disempowerment. Do you remember they were going to take her dog away from her and have it put down, something that filled me with dread and terror when I was a small child. And instead of that, instead of this wicked woman coming on a bicycle to take her beloved dog away, she steps into colour. Well, I believe that when Christ rose from the dead, something, something incredible happened and some spell was broken. And we were no longer under the control of that narrow, constraining black and white life. That Christ rose from the dead 
And the need for fruitfulness, the need for, 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 for life and more life is still deep in the heart of everyone. But the door has been opened and the land of colour awaits our exploration. And we learn to see things from his perspective, Colossians 3 verse 1. Learn to see things, learn to see the resurrection life from Christ's perspective. And you've stepped out of the cave, out of the tomb. The stone has been rolled away and you're walking with Christ into new life. Now I'm not being fanciful here. This is what Paul said in Galatians 2 verse 20. He said, the life I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Step out, open the door into a brand new world, something entirely new. The possibilities are endless. May God bless you.